Hi there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. And today I have a Yamaha Grizzly 450 four-wheel drive um, farm quad bike here on the workshop stand for some work. Uh, it's the one with the electric power steering as well, which is really cool. Now, um, I've been performing a number of workshop tasks on this bike, from changing the oil to um, I don't know, checking the drive belt, setting the valve clearances, all that kind of thing. And this video is going to cover how to locate, remove and service the air filter. Now it's a foam type air filter and we've got to clean it in a, in a we can use petrol or you can get um, special cleaning fluids and then we need to apply a special oil back onto the foam filter in the correct quantity, not too much hopefully, and then reinstall it back on the bike. So I'm going to show you how to do all of this so that you can actually service your own uh, air filter at home. You don't need to go to a dealer's. Here we go. Okay, so if you just pop the seat off, you're going to come across this underneath the seat. And inside there is the air filter. We call this the air box. And this piece, the snorkel. Okay, so we've just got a little pipe to pull out, a breather pipe. Let's not forget to put that back in later on. And all you do is undo these four clips. Now, they can be a bit tight sometimes. There we go. And they're really good at shredding gloves. There you go, look. Right, so you pull it off, and inside, that's pretty clean, that's good. There's not been uh, too many deep rivers. Inside we've got the air filter and you can see we've got this, this dirty patch here which is bang on because that's where the air is coming into the air box and of course it's going to cause most of the deposits are going to be around about opposite the snorkel. Uh, to remove the actual filter from the air box you just pull up on the, on the filter and you can move it quite easily. Now, this is the sealing ring here look that seals the air filter against the air box output which goes into the carburetor. Now, ideally, that should have some grease on it, and it will be having grease applied to it once I've cleaned it and refitting it. Okay, so to get the foam element off the filter housing, all you need to do is just pull the end piece off. Uh, uh, there we go. That's just a, a tight fit in the end of that gauze, and then you can quite easily just remove the rubber element. Now, that's pretty clean. We don't need to worry about that. This is what we're interested in and you can see all the dirt particles in that foam especially in this area here now i always use petrol to clean my air filters with but uh, you can actually buy a special cleaner so i'll get set up and we'll get this cleaned now there's uh, a number of different products on the market for cleaning the old grime off your foam type air filter and i have already done a video covering doing the same kind of thing on a yamaha viking but um, you know, you can buy, well, let's spray on, so there's the clean looks, you can buy some aerosol based cleaners. Really expensive. It's good stuff, but it is quite expensive. And I'm not really sure, actually, how good it is, how much it actually removes the dirt, rather than dissolves it or hides it or whatever it is. Um, I tend to do it the more dangerous way, which is to use some petrol. Now, you do have to be careful, because sometimes, some types of air filter, especially aftermarket ones, do not like petrol. Uh, you put them in petrol and it will dissolve the glue. And as you can see on this one here, it's made up of two types of foam. We've got a coarse foam on the outside and a much finer foam on the inside. And they're bonded together with glue. And, um, you know, you just need to be a bit careful. But, you know, the Yamaha ones, in my experience, I've had no problems at all cleaning them with petrol. And, of course, petrol is plentiful. It's cheap. And also, once it's strained, you can just burn it. Put it in your lawnmower and it'll still burn it. It's no problem. Good old lawnmowers. Right. Um, so I'm not going to use the spray type. I'm going to use some petrol. So here we go. So obviously, petrol being super flammable, make sure that there's nobody in the workshop smoking or welding or, you know, generally blowing things up. Otherwise, you'll be following them very shortly. And just run it through, let the petrol run through the foam, and it will clean off and flush out all the debris. Now having a, a, a stainless steel tray like this is really useful for this kind of thing. I used to use it for carburetors back in England, stripping them down. Because uh, you can spot things, you know, that fall out of the carb, you can spot them. You've got somewhere, it's like a bit like a petri dish, you know, you can inspect stuff. So I use it for this now. It's not often I strip carbs down anymore. And, you know, don't 
be too aggressive with air filters because or the elements because they can tear and all we're doing is trying to flush out the dirt and when you're finished you can blow it off with an airline if you want what you don't want to do is sort of wring the thing out because you could cause it to tear so you've got to be a bit careful quite respectful of the condition and you can see in there the dirt that's, that's been lifted out of that filter is now immersed in the petrol and I'll run that through a rag and the rag will take out the bigger bits and then it will go in the lawnmower and it will cut some grass for me easy isn't it okay so I'm going to blow that out with an airline shortly you can if you haven't got an airline just leave it out in the sunshine it will very quickly dry off and then you can add the new oil to it so now we've got the air filter the element all clean and nice and dry it's been out in the sunshine for a while after I blew it off with the airline been getting on with some other jobs and it's ready now to apply the new oil now again you can get the spray on type oil and there's nothing wrong with it but when you work it out how much it's going to cost you to service each and every air filter that you do and if you're, if you're motocross racing or you're doing enduros and stuff and you have three or four filters that you do at a time Man, you can easily get through these cans. You know, probably two or three filters will, will use up a whole can. It's a very, very expensive way of doing it. It's very wasteful. It's bad. Bad for the environment. Bad for your bank balance. Because if you stop using this stuff and you start using the... Just the oil. Just the plain oil. Your money goes a lot further. Let's not waste money. Because then we can buy more toys. More money, more toys. Okay, so what you need to do is grab yourself an old ice cream tub. And this one, has it got a sell-by date on it? I don't know. This is years old. Yes, it is New Zealand. I didn't bring this from England. Um, what you're also going to need is a decent pair of gloves. All right, every workshop should have a big, big box of gloves, and you'll need some new gloves. So I'm going to put my gloves on, and I'm going to fill the ice cream tub with whatever oil I've got left. There's probably just about enough in here to do it and I always use the Yamaha stuff but there's lots of different makes and I'm not trying to sell you the Yamaha oil what I'm saying to you is to buy the oil that's not in the aerosol is a much better way of doing it but I have to use the Yamaha stuff because I service Yamahas and everything is done to Yamaha's specifications for the customers and it's good gear you know and it's not that overpriced it's, it's well worth the money good quality okay there you go. Nothing left in there. Yeah, it's not on the tripod. Right. Okay, so in goes the oil. This is oh, a couple of weeks old. We were grinding a trailer recently, that's why it's covered in dust. And just pour in, you know, basically half a bottle is normal, but this is about buggered now. Okay, and just get your air filter and just again just knead in that, that oil and that's all you need to do just run it in make sure it gets all the way around the filter and then once you've mopped up all that you've got you can then just again just squeeze out the stuff that you don't want and it's amazing how little you have to use um, you don't want to overdo this you don't want too much oil in the filter because that's going to cause huge resistance to airflow and you might find especially if you've got a carburetted bike uh, it's going to really struggle to start once you've done the work and that's a sign that you've put just too much oil on the filter you haven't removed enough oil from the filter you see it running out of my hands now you know it's only lightly oil it's not soak you know make sure it's even just make sure there's oil all over the air filter covering all areas there we go well I'm quite happy with that good job it's pretty easy stuff Right, and is there any left for next time? Probably is. Only a little bit. Okay. So we'll leave that in the tub. And that's there for next time. And that can add to the new bottle when I tip it in there. And you can even, you know, just keep your oil in the tub like that. And it's, it's so easy to do, really. Now, we've not finished yet. Whilst your hands are still messy, you know, get rid of the bulk of the oil off your gloves. While your hands are still messy, we're going to put some grease on the ends 
of the filter. That's where they make contact uh, with the actual frame. You know, they're going to make contact under there. Now, you can put the grease on the frame if you want, or on the filter. I usually do it on the filter. And just standard sort of lithium grease is fine. You don't need tons of it. What you're trying to do is seal the whole thing up. And that's important because you don't want dust, especially in really dry, powdery, dusty environments. The dust can easily sort of bypass the filter, get round the ends of it, and it'll still go into your engine. And that's not good. It's going to cause lots of wear. It's going to wear the bore, cause the thing to burn oil, lose power, lose the race, number two, not number one, all that kind of stuff. So make sure you get the grease put on. That's what it's all about, doing a proper job, not half a job. There we go. Both ends. Like I say, you don't need to, you know, blather it in grease. It just needs to have that extra bit, and that's your protection. And that's all about servicing your bike properly. There we go. Okay. Now. We can install the filter now onto the onto the actual um, body of the filter, I suppose you can call it. And just make sure that the filter's tucked underneath that metal frame. Okay, now for the other end. So again, same thing. Make sure your foam is tucked under there, all the way around, and then just push the whole thing together. Pretty easy. Okay, now there's one more place that we need to put, give it a bit of a clean first, that we need to put some grease. And remember I said at the start of the video, this is the bit that seals against the air box itself on the output, and it's really important that it has grease on it. So we'll put a bit of grease around there, look. Again, not too much, we don't want great lumps of grease going in the engine, that's not going to... That's not going to work at all, but uh, just enough to seal it off. Okay, so that's now ready, cleaned up, oiled, prepared with grease on all the sealing surfaces. That's now ready to install back on the bike. Okay, so just the same way we took it out ready, we're going to offer it up at the sealing end first, slide it down, and just push it into position. There we go. And the airbox lid is what keeps that down in position. Pretty easy. Okay, well, there you go. Uh, to install the lid, very simple. Just pop it back by that pipe. Pop it back into place. Make sure that that O-ring gasket is, the rubber gasket that runs all the way around, make sure that that's fully seated. Some people even put uh, a little bit of grease around there as well, if you've been really, really picky. It all depends on, on how harsh an environment your, your bike's operating in, to be honest. And you'll feel as you put the airbox, airbox lid back on, it's pushing down um, on that filter and pushing it into place. There we go. And lastly, just that little breather pipe to go on. Okay, give that outside a bit of a clean. Job done. So there you go. That's how to locate, remove, clean, and service uh, a foam type air filter uh, on specifically a Yamaha 450 Grizzly of around about the 2014 2015 vintage. However, that's going to apply to the majority of Grizzlies. They're all pretty much the same over quite a wide um, period of time, even going back to like 2003, 2004. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, then please do leave them down below. I'm always uh, open ears to any kind of problems that you've got, and I'll do what I can to help. Uh, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, then please do. You'll get free notifications as and when any new videos get uploaded. And hey, you know, there might be something else that you find that's really helpful. Okay, well, uh, my name's Andy Young. I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Over and out.